subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chonso. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Tuesday, the 14th of September. India on path to become major defence exporter, says Prime Minister Modi in Uttar Pradesh. World donors pledge 1.1 billion US dollars in aid for Afghanistan. And. US Secretary of State hits out at Pakistan says Islamabad involved in harboring Taliban. And now for all the details. In the run up to the assembly election in Northern Uttar Pradesh state next year, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Tuesday laid the foundation stone of a university and visited the exhibition models of the Aligarh Node of Defence Industrial Corridor. Speaking at an event, Prime Minister Modi said that India is on a rising path to becoming a major defence exporter. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Tuesday said that India is no longer known as defence importer, but is on a rising path to becoming a major defence exporter. PM Modi, who reached the northern Uttar Pradesh state on Tuesday, visited the exhibition models of Aligarh Node of Defence Industrial Corridor. He also laid down the foundation stone of State University, named after freedom fighter and Jat King, Raja Mahendra Pratap Singh. Speaking at an event, Prime Minister said not only the country but the whole world is witnessing India manufacturing defence equipment from modern grenades and rifles. to fight aircraft drones and warships aajadi ke 75 saal ho gaye hum mangwate rehte hain is chhavi se bahar nikal kar duniya ke ek aham defense exporter ki nayi pehchan banane ke sankalp ke sath aage badh rahe hain bharat ki is badalti pehchan ka एक बहुत बड़ा केंद्र ये हमारा उत्तर प्रदेश बनने वाला है द डिफेंस इंडस्ट्रियल कॉरिडोर वॉज अनाउंस्ड बाय प्राइम मिनिस्टर मोदी ड्यूरिंग द उत्तर प्रदेश इन्वेस्टर्स समिट इन लखनऊ इन 2018, व्हिच हैव सिक्स नोड्स अलीगढ़ आगरा कानपुर चित्रकूट झांसी एंड लखनऊ दिस विल हेल्प इन मेकिंग द कंट्री सेल्फ रिलायंट इन द फील्ड ऑफ डिफेंस प्रोडक्शन एंड प्रमोटिंग मेक इन इंडिया making the first of many scheduled visits ahead of the upcoming polls in Uttar Pradesh the prime minister also praised chief minister yogi adityanath for his efforts the pm said up is now an attractive place for investors in the country an outbreak of dengue and viral fever has continued to wreak havoc in india's northern uttar pradesh and central madhya pradesh states Serpentile queues of patients were witnessed on Tuesday outside hospitals in parts of Uttar Pradesh where authorities have swung into action to destroy mosquito breeding grounds. An outbreak of dengue and viral fever has overwhelmed India's most populous Uttar Pradesh state where dozens of deaths have been reported since the start of September. Long queues of patients were witnessed outside hospitals in the northern state on Tuesday which has reported over 90 deaths due to viral and dengue so far. At least 60 people have died from viral fever including 5 from dengue in Firozabad district alone an official said on Tuesday. Hospitals have set up dedicated special wards as the number of patients continue to rise raising fears that Uttar Pradesh is in the midst of its worst dengue outbreak in years. 2 से 300 मरीज बुखार के होते हैं उसमें से सभी को चिकित्सक के द्वारा देखा जाता है और जिनकी चिकित्सक की मरीजों को आवश्यकता होती है जैसे कि डेंगू की मलेरिया की टाइफाइड फीवर की उन सभी की जांच कराई जाती है तो प्रतिदिन लगभग सात से आठ मरीज भर्ती हो रहे हैं बुखार के जिनकी डेंगू मलेरिया और टाइफाइड की जाँच कराई जा रही है तो डेंगू अभी हमारे सेप्टेम्बर में सात केस सितंबर में आए हैं 
Meanwhile, Central Madhya Pradesh has also reported hundreds of dengue cases, mainly in Gwalior and Indoor districts, prompting authorities to launch campaign to destroy mosquito breeding grounds. Dengue fever, which can cause intense pain in muscles and joints, is spread by the bite of the Aedes aegypti mosquito. The insect thrives in the mega cities of the tropics. Most patients survive the disease, but it is estimated to kill about 20,000 globally every year. In news from Afghanistan, at the UN meeting in Geneva on Monday, which was attended by more than 90 states, the international community pledged over 1 billion US dollars in humanitarian aid for Afghanistan, said UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres. Poverty and hunger have spiraled in Afghanistan since the Islamist Taliban took power and foreign aid has dried up, raising the specter of a mass exodus. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres said on Monday donors pledged more than a billion dollars to help Afghanistan as poverty and hunger have spiraled in the country since the Islamist Taliban took power and foreign aid has dried up raising the specter of a mass exodus. Guterres said it was impossible to say how much of the money had been promised in response to an emergency UN appeal for $606 million to meet the most pressing needs of a country in crisis. After decades of war and suffering, Afghans are facing perhaps their most perilous hour, he said in his opening remarks to donor conference in Geneva. Uh, today, we already heard clearly more than 1 billion US dollars of pledges. It is impossible, as I said, to say how much of this will be for the flesh appeal. But in any case, it represents a quantum leap in relation to the uh, financial commitment of the international community towards the Afghan people. With billions of dollars of aid flows abruptly ending due to Western antipathy and distrust towards the Taliban, several speakers in Geneva said donors had a moral obligation to keep helping Afghans after a 20-year engagement. Earlier, members of Afghanistan's business community on Monday demanded the country's assets to be unfrozen as they met to plan future strategy for the country's trade and business. Much of the Afghan Central Bank's $10 billion in assets are parked overseas where they are considered a key instrument for the West to pressure the Taliban. The U.S. Treasury Department said it is not easing Taliban sanctions or loosening curbs on Islamist groups' access to global financial system. The International Monetary Fund has also blocked the Taliban from accessing some $440 million in new emergency reserves. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken has said the United States is reviewing its relationship with Pakistan, which has been involved in harboring the members of Taliban. During a congressional hearing on Monday, Blinken said Pakistan has a multiplicity of interests that are in conflict with Washington. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken on Monday said Pakistan has been involved in harboring members of Taliban and the United States will be looking at its relationship with Islamabad in the coming weeks to formulate what role Washington would want it to play in the future of Afghanistan. Responding to questions by the first public congressional hearing about Afghanistan since last month's collapse of the U.S.-backed Afghan government, Lincoln said, Pakistan has a multiplicity of interests, some that are in conflict with Washington. Pakistan has been accused of supporting the Taliban as it battled the U.S.-backed government in Kabul for 20 years. Charges Islamabad has denied. This is one of the things that we're going to be looking at in the uh, in, in the days uh, and weeks ahead. The role that uh, that Pakistan uh, has played over the last uh, 20 years, but also the role that we uh, would want to see it play uh, in the coming uh, years and uh, what it will take for it to do that. Meanwhile, Pakistan's foreign minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi on Monday told the United Nations that observance of human rights by the Taliban in Afghanistan was linked to unfreezing of Afghan assets as the war-torn country faces an economic collapse without foreign aid assistance. Pakistan is considered as one of the two countries along with Qatar with the most influence over the Taliban and a place where many senior Taliban leaders were thought to have escaped to after the US-led invasion of Afghanistan in 2001. Moving on, 
Locals in illegally occupied region of Gilgit Baltistan recently staged a protest over shortage of doctors and other medical and technical staff in a hospital in Yasin Valley. They blamed that the government is making no serious attempts to address the demand, leaving them to suffer. Locals staged a protest recently over the shortage of doctors and other medical and technical staff in Yasin Valley of Gilgit, Baltistan, lamenting government's apathy. The protesters demanded the posting of specialist doctors and technicians in the illegally occupied region and warned of continued protests if their demands were not met. This is not the first time. Locals have long raised the issue of shortage of doctors and medical staff in the region, blaming that the government is making no serious attempts to address the demand, leaving them to suffer. They say they have now become increasingly intolerant of Pakistani occupation as Islamabad consistently maintains a negligent attitude towards the illegally occupied territory and ignores even their basic demands. In news from Nepal, Nepal's main opposition party, CPN UML Communist Party of Nepal Unified Marxist Leninist, has been obstructing the proceedings of both the houses of the parliament, accusing Speaker Agni Prasad Sapkota being biased against their party. On Monday, the CPN UML boycotted the all party meeting called by Speaker Sapkota. According to the UML, the Speaker Sapkota should either announce dismissal of 14 former UML lawmakers as recommended by the party or step down to pave the way for the election of new Speaker of the House of Representatives. They alleged that Sapkota facilitated a split in the UML by not confirming the expulsion of the lawmakers, including Madhav Kumar Nepal. After the government brought a new ordinance lowering the threshold for splitting political parties, Madhav Kumar Nepal split the party and formed a new party. CPN Unified Socialist. Meanwhile, the parliament session has been put off till September 14 amid protest by the UML. A pre-independence era film theatre in India's southern Madurai city has continued to run movies using reels at a time when digital platform has taken over the world of cinema. The staff at the theatre are trained to operate the reel machine, which has helped in keeping the traditional method of movie watching alive and preserve its legacy. A nearly century-old film theatre, which is one of the last in the world to survive on cinema reels in southern India's Madurai city, is working hard to preserve its legacy. Established in 1939, the Central Theatre of Madurai is a well-known theatre complex which has been running movies using reels at a time when digital platform had taken over the world of cinema. The staff at the theatre is well trained to operate the reel machine, which has also helped to keep the traditional method of movie watching alive. But with the changing times, the owners are also trying to shift to digital platform and screen movies both ways. <laughs> The theatre has a seating capacity of 950 people and has priced its tickets at merely 40 rupees for men and 15 rupees for women. A resident in the temple town said she visits the theatre every time old movies are screened and still enjoys the old world charm of real cinema. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude the top stories once again. India on par to become major defence exporter, says Prime Minister Modi in Uttar Pradesh. World donors pledge 1.1 billion US dollars in aid for Afghanistan. And U.S. Secretary of State hits out at Pakistan, says Islamabad involved in harboring Taliban. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night.
Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.